Welcome to Crate Training 101 presented by Midwest Homes for Pets and myself, Ted Aftimiatis. This instructional video was produced to help aid you in crate training your dog of any age. We're gonna focus on four primary points. Starting out with how to set up your Midwest crate. Number two, we're gonna focus on how to train your puppy to love going in their crate and to use the bathroom outside, not inside. Number three, We'll talk about how to train a dog who's maybe of adult age and how to get them to like going in the crate, whether they've been in a crate before or maybe they've got a not so great association built. And number four, we're gonna discuss mild separation anxiety and containment phobia and how we can get our dogs over that anxiety. Dog crates can help prevent and stop many common behavioral problems seen in dogs, such as excessive chewing, destructive behavior when you've left the home. And like people, dogs also need a little bit of space to themselves. But of course, crate training has to be done properly, and that's what this video will teach you. I know that as a professional dog trainer, the major reasons why dogs are surrendered to animal shelters are absolutely preventable. Unfortunately, in North America alone, a half a million dogs are surrendered to different organizations and shelters and are euthanized because of very commonly occurring behavior problems that in most cases are preventable. I've personally crate trained every dog that I've ever owned and they've all turned out to love their crates with just a week or two of training. But I wanna be completely transparent in saying not every dog will love the crate the second that they see it. Maybe they've got a negative association built towards it already, and that can be a bit of a challenge because some dogs can be a little bit resistant. I often hear professional dog trainers suggesting that all dogs will absolutely love their crate the moment they see it because dogs have a natural denning instinct. But here's the thing, dens don't have doors, which means it can take some dogs a little bit of getting used to, especially when we start actually closing that door. This is why a lot of guidance and training and patience is gonna be really important as we crate train your dog. This video will help reduce the likelihood of these behavioral problems even manifesting in the first place. And it's our hope that it will help thousands, maybe millions of dogs stay in their loving homes forever. So grab a pen, a piece of paper, get ready to write down some notes. This crate is a large size crate from Midwest Homes for Pets. And it is a great crate for a couple of different reasons. It's available in lots of different sizes, anything that will be hospitable for your little Pomeranian all the way up to a Great Dane. It's also great because it has two doors, one in the front and one in the side. This crate is really easy to get set up. You're just gonna fold out one edge, and then when you move it to the other direction, you're gonna see that it's gonna pop up into position. Then you find the front of the crate, and you're gonna pull it back until it locks into position. Then you're gonna find the rear section of the crate, and you're gonna pull it from the inside towards the outside of the crate. Make sure that all of your connections are properly met here, and you can check your instructions to make sure that you do this properly. I've chosen a large size crate for the next segment that we're gonna be shooting with this adorable little puppy named Boom because he's really small right now, but of course he's gonna be getting a lot bigger as the weeks and months move on. Of course, being a puppy, we wanna train him to use the bathroom outside, so we don't wanna give him this massive crate to start crate training with because oftentimes what will happen is our dogs will pee on one corner and then they'll go have a little snooze on the other side. So this specific crate comes with a great feature which is a dividing panel. So I can divide the crate into sections and as my puppy gets a little bit older and a little bit bigger, I can make the sections a little bit bigger as they need a little bit more room. So this is a great feature to have if you have a puppy and you're house training them, showing them to use the bathroom outside, not inside. So let's get started with Boom. He is an absolutely adorable little Bernese mountain dog puppy. He's 12 weeks old, 
And you want to remember that when you're starting to do crate training with your dog, especially when you start leaving them in there for any duration of time, you want to get as much of their energy out as possible. So take them for a walk, play with them, maybe play a little bit of fetch, a little bit of tug, get a lot of that energy out and make sure that they use the bathroom outside before you start crate training them inside. If you start putting them in there and they're full of energy and life, a lot of common behavior problems will start to happen because of the frustration that's built. So we're gonna start introducing our dog to the crate very simply by making it fun, getting them to have positive things inside of the crate. So oftentimes people will use treats here and it is beneficial to do it that way, especially if your dog is crazy about treats, but I much prefer to use food instead. And the reason I like to use food is, well, of course, all dogs need to eat. And so if we do have a little bit of stress, a little bit of anxiety over the crate, our dogs will get over that stress much quicker if they understand that this is the only way that I get my food. Of course, most dogs can very easily just say, eh, I don't really want that treat because I know that you're going to feed me over here at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. So there's a little pro tip for you. Feed your dog inside of the crate and you can start with just putting it just in the front of the crate so they don't have to go all the way in. Progressively, as they start to become a little bit more confident, you can start to put it a little bit further back in the crate and a little bit further back. Before you know it, it'll be all the way in the back and you don't start by just slamming the door and forcing them to stay in there. Take it one step at a time and get them to understand that this is the way that you eat now. You don't get your bowl full of food for free. Just over there, you have to eat by going inside your crate. Start with your puppy going in and getting their food and as they're becoming more confident, what you wanna start doing is closing the door and adding a little bit of duration with the door closed. You don't even have to lock the door at this point and just start closing it with your hand and popping food in and giving them a little bit more time as you're going along. As your dog gets more confident even so, then you wanna start playing with the latch, opening and closing. On this contour line, we've got two locks. It fits up and into the locks, and we've also got a latch on the front. So don't be afraid to start playing with those because we want our dogs to see closing and opening of those latches, not as an indication of that you're coming and going, it's just something that happens along the way. Okay, this will be really important in the future because we don't want our dogs running out as fast as they can when they're coming out of the crates. As your dog starts to become more confident in the crate, you wanna keep them busy in the crates. If you can be right there with them, then maybe you can give them a bone when they go in the crate, or you could also give them a toy that they can play with. But remember that you don't wanna be giving bones or stuffed toys, anything like that, that they could eat and ingest because that obviously would not be safe. Only do that if you are able to be right there with your dog. As you're adding more duration and allowing them to stay in there for longer periods of time, you're gonna want something to keep them busy in there. I oftentimes will suggest using a Kong. Now this is a very basic toy that you can find at any pet store. You can pack it with peanut butter or even bananas, all kinds of fruit and it is a great way to keep your dog occupied as you're starting to leave them in there for a little bit of time and working your way up from there. One of the little hacks that a lot of people will do with their puppies as they have to start leaving them alone for short periods of time is they'll even take their dog's food and hold back a component of it for the crate training, put it in the Kong, but they'll soak it in water for about 20 minutes before they pack the Kong with it and then they'll put that in the freezer. That'll keep a lot of puppies occupied for 30, 40, 50, sometimes even 60 minutes. It's common for dog owners to wanna to put a blanket or a dog bed in their crate and I don't suggest this unless you're gonna be right there with your puppy. Of course, puppies are gonna go through teething stages and they're gonna to start to chew on these things. Oftentimes they'll start chewing the beds and that can obviously create issues if your puppy ingests them. It is absolutely natural for puppies to whine and bark as they're learning crate training. So keep in mind that you will probably see this and what you will probably want to naturally do is to let your puppy out or lavish them and soothe them with attention. And that is not the best way to approach. 
If you let your puppy out when they're barking or whining, or if you give them a lot of attention, they will start to learn that if I bark, somebody will feel bad for me and I'll get to come out. This is not a pattern that you wanna start at a young age and it can really set your dog back a lot over the long term. So make sure that as you're starting to put your dog in the crate, you're just gonna open the door, have them go in and close the door. Leave it closed for about 10 seconds. A lot of puppies will just sit and wait, throw a little bit of food, open your crate again, and then go in and feed them. Close it again and feed, and just continue to do that until your dog realizes that when that crate door opens, it doesn't inherently mean that you are gonna come out, okay? As you are starting to do it for 10 seconds, your dog is becoming more confident. Start doing it for 20 seconds and 30 seconds and 40 seconds because we're trying to get our puppy to understand you don't run out of the crate, you wait until we tell you to come out of the crate. This will come in really handy as your dog is reaching maturity later on. Train them three times a day, have them work for their food, and be patient with them. Short sessions more frequently is the way to go. Remember to never have a collar on your puppy when they're going in the crate because it could get fetched on something, and obviously we wouldn't want that to happen. Here's a little pro tip. Take an extra leash that you might have kicking around and what you're gonna do is connect it from the door to the opening of the crate. And if you have one door, do it on that door. If you have two doors, obviously do it for both doors. Now what this does is if your dog goes in the crate and then comes out really quickly, if it bounces back and hits them, that can scare a lot of dogs and create some fear and negative associations towards the crate. So when you're starting out your crate training, just a little pro tip to make it a little bit easier on your dog. As we talk about house training our puppies, we need to know how long they can stay in the house or in the crate without actually having to go out and use a bathroom. How big are their bladders? How long can they actually hold it? There's a really basic general rule that dog trainers use, which is take the amount of months old that your dog is, so in this case with Boom, he is three months old, and add one to it, and that's gonna give you the amount of hours that you can use to determine how long your dog will be able to stay inside without having to use a bathroom. So with Boom, he is three months old, and if we add one to it, that gives us four, which means he can stay in that crate without having to go outside or even be inside the house with us for a maximum of four hours. When you take your puppy out for a pee, you wanna make sure that if they come from the crate, you pick them up, you put a leash on them, and then you take them outside. A lot of people don't do this step, and what happens is, on the way from the crate to the back door, the puppy will stop and use the bathroom. This is obviously not what we want, and we'll start a negative pattern, so pick them up, bring them outside, and walk them to the same area so they can continuously use the bathroom in the same place. The really, really key thing that if you get them into the right pattern, they will always use the bathroom in the same place. Instead of peeing all over your shrubs and having all these white spots all over your yard, they'll only pee in one place that you've appointed. When your puppy is using the bathroom outside, you wanna make sure not to make a really big deal out of the fact that they're peeing. Oftentimes I see clients making this huge party about the fact that their dog is peeing, and that can be a little bit counterproductive. So if your dog is peeing outside, you just wanna be calm with the praise that you give them. Wait for them to pee, and then afterwards say, good boy, add a good boy, or good girl, and then if you want to, you can give them a treat. Oftentimes, if you make a big party out of it when they're peeing, they will actually stop midstream, and then it looks like they're done, they'll come back inside and they'll use the bathroom. Of course, that's not what we want. A few things to keep in mind if your puppy is making mistakes inside the house. Firstly, use a proper cleaner. So a proper cleaner is gonna break down the biological matter that is in your dog's urine. So typically, you have to buy these cleaners at pet stores so that you know that they're gonna be capable of doing a job. If not, your dog may be able to smell where they peed for months, even years, and oftentimes will go back to that same spot. I hear this from clients all the time. If their puppies walk downstairs and use the bathroom, they will go down there literally for years and use the bathroom. So another key element is understanding that if your puppy is making a lot of mistakes, you wanna use tethering. Tethering is just having a belt around your waist and having a leash that comes off of that 
ensuring that your dog is always coming around walking with you. So use tethering to decrease the odds of your puppy having an unnecessary accident. And of course, be patient. Some dogs figure this out in a very short amount of time, three to five days sometimes. Sometimes they take a little bit longer, like maybe a week to two weeks. I've even seen puppies take a few months to really get a good handle on it. But be patient with your dog, and the key here is consistency. Your dog needs to know that you will consistently take them outside every few hours to make sure that they can use the bathroom outside. So Boom's been working on his crate training for about a week and a half now and he's doing pretty good. Now he lives in kind of the ideal situation, which is there's multiple people that live in the home with them. So if his owner is not home, somebody else can take him out every once in a while and then bring him back in. So you wanna keep in mind that if you don't live in a household like that, you might have to hire one of your friends or a neighbors or a dog walker. If you're gonna be at work for a long period of time, make sure that you make it easy for your puppy. They can't be in there for very long periods of time at this young age. Their bladders are just not developed enough at this stage in training. You have to build up to longer periods of time. And puppies are just not capable of that when they're that young. As always, be super patient with your puppy because they are just learning the ropes and how to live with human beings. And using the bathroom outside can take a little bit of time for them to figure out. It tends to be a little bit more challenging to train an adult dog to be accepting of the crate as opposed to a puppy because a lot of times they're used to having a lot more freedom inside the house and a lot of older dogs can see this as being a little bit restrictive. Very frequently, I have dog owners that contact me with dogs between the ages of six months and two years saying, I can't leave my dog alone because he chews things or he destroys things inside my house. This is really difficult to actually address because if you're not home, you can't correct that behavior in them. You can't reinforce them for good behavior, not chewing. You can't correct them for doing something bad. So crate training is of great value for dogs between this age bracket. I know none of my dogs could be trusted for any period of time until they were about two and a half years old. This is typically the norm, two and a half to three years old. And oftentimes, people will start to give their dogs too much freedom that they haven't earned at younger ages. And this can be a huge problem because the only way to address it is to prevent it. So let's get started with Louie. Louie is the next and final dog in the video. And as you'll notice, I'm not using a whole lot of words as I'm communicating with Louie. That's because he is completely deaf. So he's a five year old rescue dog and just such a cool dog. I've just fallen in love with Louie. And unfortunately, from what we understand, he's probably built a bit of a negative association with the crate. So from what we understand, in the previous home he was living at, he was left for extended periods of time in the crate. And unfortunately, there was also another dog that he was living with that, as I understand it, was also torturing him a little bit inside of that crate. So let it be known, that if you have multiple dogs, don't allow your dogs to do this to one another because it can actually help promote negative associations, which is not fair to the dog who's gonna be in the crate. So Louis should be good and hungry. Typically he eats his breakfast at about 8 a.m. It's now 1 p.m. and he's not eaten anything all day. So we're gonna use that desire for his food as we are starting to do our crate training. We're gonna start out with him just nice and slowly. And as you can see, he's actually much better than I initially anticipated. He doesn't seem to have a negative association towards it. His food drive is getting him over any potential negative associations that he has. But still, I'm gonna go one step at a time. I'll keep both of my doors open so that he feels like there's a little bit more options available, like he can come out of the front or he can come out of the side. Of course, I want to use my leashes to ensure that those doors are not going to slap him as he is coming in and out and potentially scare him. By far, the largest thing that people do incorrectly with crate training is asking their dog to stay in the crate for a long period of time without actually building up to that. 
you need to remember that you can't just put your dog in there, get them to, you know, have some positive associations, and just leave them in there for eight or nine hours when you go for work. It doesn't work that way. Oftentimes, this will lead to separation anxiety, containment phobia, as we're gonna talk about later in the video, and you want to remember that your dog has to build up to that. So the thing that you wanna remember is, you wanna actually use your weekends and your weeknights when you're not at work for your training. Now, I know that this is completely counterintuitive to what you're probably thinking. When I'm at home with my dog, they should have freedom to be around me. The problem is, is that you can't build up to that time unless you're home to actually build up to that time. So you wanna use your nights, come home from work, let your dog out, take them out for a walk, get them tired out, and then maybe do your food in the crate and have them go in for another few hours. And then take them out, use the bathroom, and cycle through those things. So I oftentimes refer to this as the weekend training model. And basically, you're gonna use the time that you're home with your dog effectively so that when Monday morning comes, it won't be such a shock to your dog's system. If you have to be gone for eight or nine hours, make sure that somebody can come in midday, whether it's a dog walker, a family friend, or a neighbor, to let your dog out, use the bathroom, and get some energy out before they go back in the crate. It's not recommended to use bones or stuffed toys in your crate unless you can be right there with your dog overseeing them in case of something going wrong. If your dog were to ingest something, of course, we wouldn't want them to be in a vulnerable situation if you weren't there overseeing things. So you might wanna use something like a Kong as we talked about in the puppy section. You can take their food, water it down, stuff the Kong with it and put it in the freezer. That will take them 60 minutes sometimes to be able to actually get that out and it will keep them occupied. If you feed your dog raw food, you can do that as well too. You can stuff it in there, put it in the freezer, or take them a little while. There's a couple other little things that you can do that will make the time a little bit easier on your dog. So the first thing is, behind me I've got a diffuser going with some lavender oil. I use it every single day in my dog training facility and it absolutely helps to just be a little bit calmer. Another thing that you can do is purchase a quiet time crate cover. This is made by Midwest Homes for Pets and they are specifically designed for the crate that you are using with your dog. So it's gonna fit absolutely perfectly. This is great for dogs that have too much happening all around them. So sometimes dogs will be very visually fixated and they're always looking out the windows and they see a little bird and they start to bark and things can be a lot more intricate if your dog is constantly being visually stimulated. So take a look at the quiet time crate cover for your crate. As mentioned in the puppy training section, we talked about getting our puppies to work for their food by going in the crate. If you only feed your adult dog inside the crate, they may be a little bit leery of it for a couple of minutes, a couple of hours, maybe even a couple of days. Once they start to realize that this is the only access that they get to food, they're going to start to love going in the crate. I have literally done this process with over 500 dogs that hated going in crates and they all love going in the crates and they'll stay inside of the crates because they understand this is the way that I eat. So very simply, if you put the food in there, if they don't wanna take it, then take the food out, wait another eight or so hours and then try again. By that point, they should be hungry and they should be much more motivated to going inside of the crate. So we talked about in the puppy section, you're gonna start by just putting the food just at the beginning of the crate and then start moving it back further and further and further. I personally like to just take the food and just put it in the back and not even put it in a bowl. I find that they will eat it very, very quickly. If it's in a bowl, I like to just spread it out towards the back of the crate. It takes them a little bit longer to actually eat the food. How do you know how long your dog is capable of staying in that crate for? Of course, you start slow and you add more time as your dog is developing and becoming more confident. Of course, we've already talked about this. However, the wider question is, at what age is your dog capable of not having to be in the crate? And this is a really simple answer. When you start giving your dog that freedom to not be in the crate as you leave the house, 
When you come home and you're starting to see that your dog has been chewing on things and has started regressing in their training, they are not capable of being alone without getting into some mischief. And so you have to go back to the crate until they're a little bit older and start making wiser choices. As mentioned in the puppy section, never put your dog in the crate with a leash or a collar on. As a professional dog trainer, I often get calls from dog owners that suggest their dogs are dealing with separation anxiety. And of course, separation anxiety is a very real thing and a huge struggle for some dogs. But in this section, I wanna talk about what separation anxiety actually is. We're also gonna talk about containment phobia and I also wanna talk about boredom, which is what a lot of these dogs are actually struggling with. Separation anxiety is known as the distress the dog feels when they can't be with their owner. Common behavioral problems include excessive barking, destructive chewing, soiling in the house, and even self-harm or self-mutilation. Boredom is often misdiagnosed as separation anxiety. It's really easy to tell if your dog is just bored. Typically, these dogs are between the ages of six months and two years, as we talked about earlier, and Typically, if they are exercised out in the yard or go for a walk and come back inside, usually the destructive behavior and the chewing and the excessive barking will not start to manifest until a few hours after their owners left. They've had a nap, they've got up, they've got nothing to do, and so they start chewing on the plant or they start wrecking the sofa. The dog with separation anxiety, unfortunately, those triggers start a lot sooner. Oftentimes, they don't even need the person to leave a trigger such as them grabbing their keys or putting on their work shoes will oftentimes trigger the anxiety. So that's a very simple way to be able to tell. Is your dog just bored or does your dog actually struggle with separation anxiety? The best way to tire out a dog is by not only challenging them physically by taking them for a walk, but also to challenge them mentally. Teach them things, ask them to do things, show them how to do new tricks. Combining physical and mental is the quickest and most effective way to tire out a dog before you go to work. If you've got really foul weather and you're not able to take your dog outside, the easiest way to go about getting some exercise in that is not only mental and physical is to train your dog to walk on a treadmill. I've trained so many dogs to do this in the past. I even have a free online course that'll show you step-by-step -step how to do this. You can check that website out at www.tedsbooks.com slash treadmill for the free video course. Containment phobia is altogether a different issue. It's often referred to as the extreme fear of being trapped or confined. And so with a dog with separation anxiety, typically the anxiety will not start until the dog is in the crate and the person leaves the house, that's when things start to happen. Just being in the crate typically will not start to show signs for a dog that has separation anxiety. For a dog who has containment phobia, the moment they go in there and the door closes, the situation starts to escalate. Oftentimes we see the dogs drooling, panting, and just pacing, oftentimes spinning, and that is the sign of a dog that has containment phobia. If your dog has a mild case of separation anxiety, there's a few things that you can do. You might not need a trainer to be able to intervene. So the first thing I would suggest is a thunder shirt. As you can see with Louie here, he's got this tightly fitted shirt, and basically what it does is it operates under the premise that if this dog is wearing something very tightly fitted, it's gonna give them the nurturing feeling that like a baby, an infant may have as they're being swaddled with a blanket. I've seen it work with dogs who are terrified of thunder and lightning, dogs that are terrified of fireworks, dogs with anxiety. I've seen it with dogs with some separation anxiety as well too, especially the milder cases. So it can be very, very, very beneficial. Give it a try. Another thing that I oftentimes suggest is if your dog is starting to nibble on the front of the bars, this is a product called Bitter Apple Spray. Again, this does not work for every single dog, but if you spray this on the inside of the kennel, especially on the front where the door is, 
what's gonna happen is once your dog starts to lick and to nibble on those bars, it's gonna taste really, really bad. And I've seen this product stop dogs from chewing pieces of furniture, all kinds of different things. So feel free to give that a shot, especially if your dog is starting to chew on the inside of the crate. If your dog is struggling to stay calm in the crate, there's a bunch of different things that you could do. The first thing that I would suggest is look at the surroundings. Is there loud noises that they're picking up on and creating these promptings for the excessive barking? Are they looking out a window and that's creating some issues? So maybe you have to purchase a crate cover so that they're not as visually stimulated on certain things. Maybe you haven't set up a fan, maybe you haven't set up music to keep them focused on something else. Another thing that you can do is, there's lots of different apps that you can get that allow you to set up cameras so that you can actually view your dog when you're away from home. These cameras allow you to see your dog through the camera, and if your device is in front of the crate, they can also see you, which can help them stay calmer. You can talk to them, almost like a walkie-talkie, which can also kind of help soothe them from time to time, or if they start barking a little bit too much, you can say, hey, that's too much. I'm right here with you. You don't need to be doing that. If your dog is barking, it will count. Every day, my dog barked this amount of times so that you can keep track of, is my dog barking more, is my dog barking less, and so on and so forth. Another thing that I would highly suggest is have a dinner party, have your friends over, and record your conversation. Record two, three, four hours, and then when you leave for work, play that recording so that your dog can hear it and put it on loop so that it just loops all day long. Oftentimes, that can be enough to soothe the average dog to get them over that little bit of anxiety just because there's the comfort of hearing your voice. When your dog is doing really well in the crate and you want to start to give them a little bit of extra freedom inside the home, the Pet Gate by Midwest Homes for Pets can be a really great tool to have inside your home to help you make that transition. It was super easy for me to set up in my own home. As you can see, I'm doing it here with my cute little daughter, Athena, and we did it literally in under five minutes. It's also a really great tool if you've got a dog who's maybe getting into your cat food or your dog likes to run out of the front door and runs around in the front yard. That can be really dangerous, of course. Or maybe you have people coming over and you just wanna have a little bit of separation there because your dog is a little bit anxious around new people the pet gate is a great solution for you. And I'll leave you with this. If your dog has extreme separation anxiety, is breaking out of the crate, or really bad containment phobia, please do yourself and your dog a favor. Contact a good trainer in your area that knows how to work with dogs like this because it is really important that you have somebody come into your home and walk you through it step by step. Thank you so much for watching Crate Training 101 presented by Midwest Homes for Pets and myself, Ted Eftimiatis. I hope that your Midwest crate will be a place that your dog can go and stay calm and be happy when you cannot be with them and you have to be away from them. Again, thank you for watching and please check out our website for more training tips and you can also see the other products that Midwest Homes for Pets offers at our website, www.midwesthomesforpets.com.